Hi everyone, welcome back to Data Cadence. My name is Rahul. I work as a senior applied research scientist. And in today's video, we are diving deep into three powerful techniques used in Gen AI and LLMs in an enterprise setting that is retrieval augmented generation or RAG versus fine tuning versus prompt engineering. Now these concepts aren't just theoretical. They come from my personal experience in applying all of them in various industry scenarios. And each of these techniques has its own unique strengths and applications. And often there is a very fine line when deciding between which one should I use. In this video, I'll try to break down the differences, share insights from real world applications and help you understand when to choose one approach over the others. So this is also very important to know from an interview perspective, because when you're interviewing for a Gen AI based role or a Gen AI based machine learning or data science role, the interviewer often expects you to know the difference between each of these because these days, a lot of the companies want to apply Gen AI and LLMs into their particular enterprise setting, but often with a lot of choices on the, uh, on the corner, it's not very easy to decide which one should they go for. So it's a good test to understand how much you understand each of these techniques and then how do you pick which one should you go for, right? So without further ado, let's begin. So right, I mean, uh, like I mentioned, all the above are different mechanisms for using LLMs on enterprise data. And let's start with prompt engineering, the simplest one. So prompt engineering is basically crafting specific prompts to elicit desired outputs from a pre-trained model. Now this pre-trained model could be as simple as something like GPT-4 or chat GPT, or it could be some other LLM which is provided by some other provider like Claude, or it could also be an open source LLM like Llama from Meta and so on. Uh, prompt engineering, as everyone might be aware, is a very simple technique of writing prompts to get the desired output, like I said. And there are certain pros to that. So the first one is that there is no need for additional training. It's very quick and cost effective. So it's often very good for use cases where you need a rapid prototyping. And it's pretty flexible and easy to adapt. And it typically works well for common use cases, uh, which the model has already seen during pre-training. So things like summarization, translation, and so on. For these simple use cases and for a very generic domain, prompt engineering tends to work really well and it's a very good choice if you want to do some rapid prototyping and don't want to get into a lot of hassle. This can give you good results right, right out of the box. There are certain disadvantages as well. So the first one could be it can be difficult to find the right prompt. That's one of the things that people have been struggling with tuning their particular prompts to get the desired output. That is the first drawback. The second one is that uh, it can be highly prone to hallucinations, especially if the model hasn't been uh, trained for that specific domain that you want to use it for. So in that case, you can see hallucinations in the model output. And the third one is that it cannot be very useful for a different domain not seen during the training phase. So it's often hard to make it work for very domain specific use cases. And that's where I think the other two that is RAG and fine tuning will come into the picture. And also we do have context window limitations. So a lot of the models do have these context window limitations. The context window of a lot of the LLMs is limited. However, in the recent uh, advancements that have been there in these large language models, there is often a large context length, which is uh, being allowed by these models. But uh, supporting the large context length is one thing and trying to make sense out of a long context is another thing. So basically there is a research paper called as lost in the middle phenomenon. So long story short, what you need to understand is that even though the models support long, longer context length these days, but still it's hard to make sense if you are trying to supply a very large context to the model as a prompt, right? Then the last one is that it cannot incorporate recent information that is changing with time. And that is the most obvious drawback. So chat GPT right now supports some sort of rag architecture when you go to it, but in the earlier days, uh, it was a very famous information that it gave or a very famous output that it had given. If you tried to supply it a prompt asking for some recent information, so it used to say that my training data is only available till so and so date and therefore I cannot answer the questions. So that is another limitation. Now let's go to the second piece that is fine tuning. And in fine tuning also there are two ways of doing it. First one is the complete fine tuning and second one is PEFT or PEFT for short that is parameter efficient fine tuning. So here we use techniques like LoRa and QLoRa to basically uh, make some sort of uh, enhancements or optimizations on the number of parameters that you are tuning. And that could be a topic for another video. So I will definitely create a video on LoRa. That's one of the most uh, famous PEF techniques for parameter efficient fine tuning of large language models. 
so that is a topic for another video but yeah long story short you have two ways of fine tuning that is complete fine tuning and parameter efficient fine tuning whatever we discuss is with regards to a generic fine tuning and the idea behind fine tuning a pre trained llm is to basically take a pre trained model and you train it on a specific data set right and this specific data set often belongs to a specialized domain so for example you want to pre train a uh, llm uh, and you want to fine tune a pre trained llm on say financial domain or financial data right so something like that now of course there are some pros to this uh, the first pros or the first advantage is that it tailors the model to specific tasks or domains and like i mentioned this is really good for highly specialized domains like say medicine or finance or legal and so on the second advantage is that it can significantly improve the performance for particular applications which are highly specialized and requires nuanced understanding and generation so it's similar to the first point but yeah like i mentioned if your domain is highly specialized and requires a nuanced understanding then say for things like medical diagnosis or legal document analysis you might want to consider some sort of fine tuning on your uh, data right so it also allows for the better handling of domain specific terminology or some jargon which is specific to your particular domain so often there might be a lot of terms which are very specific to your domain say uh, in the medical analysis there might be a lot of terms which might be very specific to that particular domain so in such a scenario also fine tuning would help you understand those terms and uh, those jargon in a much better way right the third advantage is that there is a reduced dependence on prompt crafting because a lot of times you would expect a certain behavior and you are fine tuning for that particular behavior so yes there is a reduced dependence on the prompt crafting or the prompt engineering right there are certain disadvantages of fine tuning as well so the first one is that it requires additional compute to train or fine tune the models that's pretty obvious because when you want to do some sort of fine tuning or you want to do some sort of additional training so you will need some sort of additional compute to make that happen and it could be expensive to fine tune or train although like i mentioned that parameter efficient fine tuning could be a good alternative but uh, that also has its own trade offs between the accuracy and the cost and when i say cost that's essentially the training time that you spend over a gpu instance so yes there is a trade off that is associated with this but uh, the third one is that uh, it needs a substantial amount of task specific data right and this is one of the most important drawbacks because often you would need annotated data when you are using supervised fine tuning uh, for one of these models and uh, that could be very expensive and time consuming to obtain right so that would be another disadvantage and of course then there are other things like there is a risk of overfitting always and uh, the hyper parameter tuning can be a challenging task especially for the very large models that we have right and hallucinations can still happen that is still there and it's still hard to incorporate recent data without retraining so yes one of the ways of uh, incorporating the recent data or the recency in your data which is coming out is to retrain the model but again for very large models this is not a very feasible thing to do and it could be very expensive and just infeasible to do the retraining again and again so yes that is another drawback now let's talk about uh, one of the most popular uh, techniques out there that is called rag or retrieval augmented generation and the core idea is to retrieve relevant documents from an external knowledge base and use them as context for generating responses and here i have drawn a very naive rag uh, rag pipeline and uh, of course uh, as time has passed in this has been an active area of research and there is a lot of research going around retrieval augmented generation but yeah this is just a naive architecture for a rag pipeline right so you have your set of documents you have the user who comes in and throws a query to the model now for these set of documents first thing that you do is pass them through an embedding model to generate the embeddings of these documents and you often perform an intermediate step called chunking so you break your documents into smaller chunks or meaningful chunks there are various ways of doing this chunking will not be going into that but yes you create the embeddings and then you store it in a vector database right and what you do then is whatever query that this user has given to the model you do an approximate nearest neighbor search and again there are multiple algorithms for doing this approximate nearest neighbor search in an efficient manner one such algorithm is hnsw you can google more to uh, learn more about this particular algorithm but yeah long story short you do a nn search with your query over your document chunks and try to retrieve some context and now what you do is along with your query and prompt you try to pass the context to the llm and then that llm utilizes the query the prompt and the context which you have retrieved to generate an output that is the basic idea behind rag now there are certain advantages in fact a lot of advantages of doing rag pipeline that you can access a vast information 
and uh, basically it's scalable because companies these days or in, or corporations these days have a lot of enterprise data over which they want to use llms but it's often highly specialized in terms of both domain and the context that this particular data has and rag could be a very suitable kind of a solution for such enterprises or for such companies right the second advantage is that the keep uh, it rag architecture basically keeps the model up to date with latest information so yes your information if it changes very frequently if your retrieval pipeline is really robust you can incorporate that latest information or that recent information and supply it as a context to your llm so that takes care of the recency problem that we have with a lot of llms when we use a uh, prompt engineering or a fine tuning based approach the third advantage could be it can be used for a specialized domain to a great extent without any additional training so in the rag like we saw in the architecture above you are only retrieving the relevant context and passing it to the uh, llm along with the prompt so there is no additional training required and still you are able to factor in your customized domain to a great extent with this retrieval in place the fourth one is the reduced model size so since you are uh, using this retrieval to uh, basically supply it along with your prompt you can rely on a smaller base model because essentially you are relying on external data for the detailed information and when i say this i am assuming that we have a robust retrieval mechanism in place also there are relatively lesser chances of hallucinations when compared to prompt engineering and fine tuning again this is based on the assumption that we do have a robust retrieval mechanism in place and there is an enhanced explainability of course it allows the end user to see the sources of retrieved information so you can mention from which document you had retrieved those chunks and that will give some layer of explainability over fine tuning and prompt engineering and that gives you the enhanced explainability the next advantage is that the integration with a variety of knowledge bases is very simple so whether be it internal documentation it could be presentations it could be crm systems company reports structured databases you name it and it's easier to integrate with all of these therefore that makes rag highly scalable in nature now of course there are certain disadvantages as well so the first one is that it's non trivial to build a robust rag pipeline yes the one we saw above was a very naive rag pipeline like i mentioned and there are a lot of things that go into place so how do you chunk your data what sort of chunking strategy do you finalize on whether you should do re-ranking or not so it has often been seen that re-ranking definitely improves the performance of your rag pipeline and is one of the most easiest things that you can do to improve your performance of your rag pipeline and then quality of retrieval is also one of those things so there are too many design choices that you have to make so long story short it's non trivial to basically have a robust rag pipeline in place and it takes some effort to get a robust rag pipeline up and running the second disadvantage like i mentioned there is a very heavy dependence on the retrieval quality so if your retrieval quality is poor and you are not able to retrieve the relevant context your rag pipeline goes for a toss and all the hypotheses uh, which are after that sort of fails so uh, it's heavily dependent on the retrieval quality the third one is the performance overhead so of course when you are having this retrieval process process in place so that does add additional latency to the application because the retrieval process also takes its own sweet bit of time right although it's fast with uh, a lot of the advancements that are coming in when it comes to embedding models and encoders and all of that but still that does add some additional uh, overhead in terms of latency when it comes to the entire application right the fourth one is the handling of the noisy data so if your knowledge base is corrupt or has some sort of noisy data so in such a scenario the retrieval pipeline won't really function very well and that will cause your rag pipeline to not work so well right the next one is context window limitations so of course when you are retrieving those relevant chunks you are still bound by the context size of the particular llm and you can only retrieve a specific number of chunks and you cannot retrieve a lot of data sometimes right and the next one is security and privacy concerns now this is really important for large organizations because uh, based on my experience if you are using a third party llm so say something like gpt4 or chat gpt or any of the closed source llm say from cloud or open ai then the problem is that when you are supplying your relevant context or you are retrieving some of the internal context based on some internal documentation or some uh, proprietary information for the company it can have its own legal challenges and compliance issues so that is definitely one of the uh, largest drawbacks that i have seen and that is one of the largest uh, sort of ways in which companies are hesitating to use rag 
uh, one simple solution is to use an open source architecture that you can host in house so something like llama that could be useful but yeah just to mention that security and privacy concerns are also one of the largest disadvantages when it comes to rag and the next one is dependence on external knowledge bases so of course incomplete or incorrect knowledge bases can degrade the performance of your rag pipeline and last but not the least uh, the maintenance of vector dbs so uh, the maintenance of vector dbs again could be quite an issue for some of the uh, use cases so for example if you have a news aggregation service you need to continuously ingest and index new data and uh, maintenance of that particular vector db or that retrieval system could be another challenge that you can face so i see we covered a lot of topics and a lot of points corresponding to all the three uh, design choices that you might have when you are trying to implement gen ai and llms in an enterprise setting and like i said a lot of these were not just bookish a lot of this was based on my personal experience trying to utilize all three uh, based on different scenarios in an enterprise setting and i hope that this particular video helped you gain an in depth understanding of all the three mechanisms that you have in place and which one should you opt for depending on different conditions and scenarios so hopefully this gave you a good understanding if it did please consider liking this particular video and subscribe to this channel for more such content so i do have plans on uploading more content be it related to interview prep be it related to classical machine learning generative ai and a lot other things So stay tuned for that and subscribe to this channel for more such content. So thank you so much for sticking till the end. Uh have a good day and take care. See you until next time.